In this video, we're going to look at using still images in Adobe Premiere and using keyframes to add subtle animation, what's sometimes called the Ken Burns effect, because you've probably seen this in documentaries. I have an open project here where I've added two historical images, but you could do images of any kind. And you can see that they are on my timeline down here in the right hand corner, and I can view my video up above. Neither of these are sized properly, so we're going to use the effects effect controls panel to resize them and then also add some subtle animation. So if I go up to that in my upper left hand panel and if I have that clip selected, my first image and my playhead over it so I can preview what I'm doing, I can change the scale so that this image um, is more appropriately sized for my frame. Now this is a vertical image in a horizontal field so it's never going to fit perfectly and I'm going to go ahead and position it where I want it to be as a beginning point, and then I'm going to use keyframes to adjust it. So I adjusted the scale so it fills the whole position, and then I'm also going to change the position, which is right above. I can change it from right to left, which I don't want to do here, but is often helpful. And I can also change it up and down. I'm going to change it so that it starts at the bottom of this picture, and then we're going to have it go upward to reveal the clock tower. So here I have this clip, and right now if I play it, nothing's going to happen. It will just show the image frozen in that position we selected. But if I go back to the beginning, I can add keyframes, and this is the key thing here, is clicking one of these stopwatch little tiny icons over here in the effect controls panel where it says toggle animation. What I want to change with this animation is the position, so I'm going to click that stopwatch and it's going to add a keyframe. It looks like a little teeny diamond and you can control them using these arrows and this diamond in the middle for adding or removing keyframes. Now ideally this is aligned with the first frame of my image or really wherever I want the um, animation to begin, which might be halfway through or you can have more than one as well. Then I'm going to go ahead to the end of my image because I want this one to just smoothly scroll up till the end. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do a few frames back from the very end of the image so it'll like scroll up and then pause at the end. And I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe by clicking that little diamond up here. And now I have a keyframe at the beginning and I can toggle between them using these arrows. So here's my first starting point and here's my second ending point. Right now they look the same because I haven't made any changes. With my second ending point selected, I'm going to change the position of this image to be where I want it to end. So I'm scrolling over on those numbers. You can also just type in the number um, to change it as well. And here's where I want it to end, actually maybe a little bit lower. We don't need to see quite that much sky. And then it will ideally pause before moving to my next clip. So now we'll try playing it um, by moving the playhead back to the beginning and see if it works. It does. That's a pretty quick animation. If I went, wanted to go back and adjust it and say, hey, I don't actually want to start this far down. Maybe I'll start a little farther up. As long as I have that keyframe selected, I can change my positioning and it will start in that location instead. I'm kind of resetting my starting point. So I could start it a little higher in the image and it will still scroll to that same ending point that I've selected. Let's do it the same effect on the second one, except we're going to zoom in. So first I'm going to set my starting point using scale. And I want this image to be just big enough to cover my frame. And that's going to be my starting point is just nicely positioned there. I'm also going to move it up a little bit so we can see the text at the bottom. And this I want to be my starting point. I'm going to use my arrow keys to make sure I'm on the very first frame of this image. And this is a reason you usually want to add this animation as a last step, because if you're still adjusting clips on your timeline, you're going to have to move these keyframes around a lot as your clips become longer or shorter or moved around. So I would save this as a last step. But once you're ready to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add my keyframe. Um, in this case, I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to use it scale instead and click that stopwatch for toggle animation next to scale. And that creates my little keyframe. This is my starting point. This one, I'm going to have it also zoom in all the way till the very end. So I'm going to make sure I have my very last frame selected using my arrows, and I'm going to make a new keyframe. This one I want to be a really subtle animation. So rather than having the scale change dramatically, I'm on my ending point now, and I'm going to just have it zoomed in really just a little bit. This is a really common technique if you're using still images, because if you have an image that's completely still, um, your audience might think the video has frozen, so a little animation is useful for making them know that it is in fact moving forward. 
that looks pretty good. Let's say I wanted to keep um, the building in the middle exactly centered or I wanted to move to a different part of my frame. I can make keyframes for more than one effect at a time. So if I go back to my beginning point and I can use my arrows to navigate to those different points, I can have a corresponding keyframe for position as well and also change the position like we did on the first picture. I'm going to have a start in the same place, then I'm going to use my scale keyframe so that those align add one for position. Now I have the same starting and ending point for both scale and position. And now I'm going to go ahead and just move this a little bit so that we keep the building nicely centered. Or maybe I really want it to go over to one side of the picture or the other. So wherever I want my ending point to be, this will change now the scale and the position. So it zooms in, but to a particular point of the image. Now you can see under the effect controls panel that there are a lot of other things you can change as well, including scale, rotation, anchor point, opacity. You can also change effects like the color using the same format, and you can use keyframes for audio and other elements of your timeline as well whenever you want to do these animations, um, both subtle or dramatic, to enhance your video.